thanks for having me. This is a unique experience presenting in uh, virtual reality, doing a PowerPoint presentation from my lounge. <laughs> thanks. Um, I'm here today to talk about um, our University of Portsmouth and our activities in XR developments and some of the exciting projects that we've been doing. It's been great to hear about education and how we're, you know, we're trying to create these amazing spaces to working, and that's really a driver of what I've been doing um, at the university. My colleague Pippa apologizes. Um, she wasn't able to make it today. She's launching an event, so it's me doing the presentation on my own. So if we could go to the next slide, please. So the University of Portsmouth, um, I work in a faculty called Creative and Cultural Industries, which has a um, diverse set of um, schools. We have everything from computer games, technology, visual effects, through to fashion and textiles, illustration, architecture. And we've been collaborating and working across many spaces for, for years now, 15 plus years. And it's really important that we wanted to try and consolidate some of that knowledge in facilities to be able to build the, 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 the talent pipeline of the future. And to that end, we've um, been funding for a new center we're calling CCI XR, Center for Creative and Immersive XR based at the university. And we raised 6.4 million pounds. Um, 3.6 million pounds of that came from what we have in the UK our local enterprise partnerships. They are funding organizations that work in regions. They are funded by local, the, the, the government and they give money to worthwhile projects. Now, normally um, the LEP, as we would call them, would give funding to kind of infrastructure projects within the city, um, roads and um, roundabouts and things like that. But we put in to try and create Portsmouth as a center for XR, to encourage businesses in the local area, to embrace, to look into XR, to work nationally, internationally with um, creative partners, to look at exciting projects and solutions for entertainment. So to that, we've decided to um, set up a brand new capture studio. Myself, I'm ex visual effects industry, and I've taught motion capture for nearly 15 years now within the university and more and more we were using real-time technology VR AR and XR to explore production methods and to create entertainment so from that we expanded out to create motion capture virtual production stage we've got an LED wall that's coming and being installed a volumetric capture system and 4d views holosys system photogrammetry we've got sound studios with binaural ambisonic and spatial audio lidar scanners it's the end-to-end -end platform that we have created. How do we capture content, create content, deliver it, and interact with it in a meaningful way? Can I have the next slide, please? Um, this is an old version of my PowerPoint. This is not the one that I've been <laughs> rehearsing, so I'm going to wing it. <laughs> so virtual production. I don't know if everyone is aware what virtual production is. It's a big buzzword in the industry at the moment, using real-time technologies to iterate workflows. Um, so that is a really key thing that we embrace. Um, it sits in the XR space because you can have people in VR headsets, location scouting in virtual environments, in Unreal Engine and Unity. And then that is presented in real time on large LED screens that cameras can then use to film in camera VFX, allowing much faster iteration of processes on stage when filming you can always have golden hour effectively because you tell unreal engine what time of day you would like it to be could i have the next slide please so to that end we've we've developed um and um, ordered a smart stage the company called white light in the uk who are delivering off the shelf virtual production it's like a half led cube with the tracked camera so it can do both visual effects and it can do um, kind of virtual presentation. And that's one of the things we're really interested in is remoting. It's been used on Eurosport and um, the World Cup for virtual studio. So we teach a television and broadcast course and a film course at the university. So it's really important that we embrace this kind of technology and give it to our students because they are the talent pipeline of the future. It's really important. There's a skill shortage across um, the globe at the moment. I've been talking um, with many practitioners in the UK, and we are desperately short of good programmers and 3D artists. And now that if you have those skills, you can work anywhere from virtual reality through to sort of film production. Can I have the next slide, please? Motion capture, I'm sure you're all aware, um, is funny suits with dots on, 
and they've been teaching this at a high level and many students working in industry and this is another way of bringing characters to life and you know animating ourselves in these virtual worlds as the metaverse grows and adapts these skills for bringing characters to life in more and more believable ways is going to be very very important and this is what we will be teaching on how we can do that from simple like we are today with having our hands tracked with our, and our heads tracked with simple controllers from Vive trackers through to high-end suits like Xsense and Vicon motion capture suits to bring digital characters to life. Next slide, please. Um, yes, we, we use Vicon motion capture and we've been doing this across uh, many projects. We embed a lot of our teaching in real world projects. We get real world clients in. Here you can see um, a very famous conductor, Sir Simon Rattle, that we motion captured for the London Symphony Orchestra. And the lad helping me put markers on Sir Simon, there was my student, Joe, who was working with me in the mocap studio. So we teach our students by embedding them in real world client projects. Next slide, please. We've done many workshops and part of what we do with motion capture is to open it up and all these technologies to new areas. And that's a key message in our new center is that lowering the barrier to entry these very high end technologies are difficult to access and we saw a real need in the uk to make this center and to kind of bring people to it to embrace the technology and understand in one of the previous slides we saw about bottlenecks um, in development and content creation and, and it can also be quite a difficult thing to embrace and that's the goal of our center is to bring people in and educate them about how to create their content what they really need we are unbiased. We, we are not led by a particular manufacturer. We are led by what the equipment can do and what it can help people with. So that's where we can bring people in, help them find the right solution for what they want, and bring that to their problem that they've, they've got. Can I have the next slide, please? So the CCIXR Centre is opening next year uh, in 2022. Um, we're hoping in March we'll be able to start kind of bringing people in the door. There's a lot of technology to install. But in the meantime, we were obviously hit by COVID. Our delay opening has been very, very delayed. But we've been active in all the projects that we are engaged in. And one of the most exciting things, I think, for me of my career was working with the Royal Shakespeare Company and a wide, wide consortium of partners earlier this year on some called Dream. There was a large government incentive called Audiences of the Future, which was teaching about how to um, bring new audiences into technology. How can we embrace virtual production and real-time technologies in theatre? How can we bring XR technology in? And we originally had a plan to open like a fantastic fairground in a forest using Midsummer Stream and lots of technology. COVID hit. We tried again. It was going to be in a disused um, um, department store in Stratford-upon-Avon where we were going to set up the world of dream, Midsummer Night's Dream, like it had come in. Um, we were one of the partners on this and the final performance that was decided upon was held in Portsmouth where we created a virtual stage. You can see some of the pictures there. The actors sat down after doing our Q&A and then myself and another guy, Steve. This is only a tiny part of, of the production stuff. There was 150 plus people working on this project over three months, live R&D in the space where we took the creative brief, which was the new dream, Midsummer Night's Dream World, and brought that to life and streamed that to audiences. We originally thought about streaming it to headsets. We realized we were going to cut off probably a vast majority of users by this. Lots of people still digest material through screens. So we had to think about how we could present this dream performance to screen for people. Can I have the next slide, please? Kind of winging it here because these are not the slides I was expecting, <laughs> sorry. Um, volumetric capture, another big part. We looked at volumetric capture for performances and we decided that um, we would need this within our center. It's very expensive to process at the moment, very difficult to kind of make affordable in production to get that high quality, especially for live performance. Um, and we've decided upon a system called 4D Views, our Holosys, which is off the shelf, which is unusual for something like this. And it allows us to process our own data locally rather than relying on cloud services. And again, in the last presentation, Sometimes the restrictions that we face in universities and in education with network restrictions, um, admin administration control restricts us quite a lot. So picking the right solution 
that can be quite open and again democratize the creation of this kind of content was really important and this system gives us that ability to bring people in test and try things and then there's not heavy cloud computing costs based on processing volumetric data can i have the next slide please Photogrammetry, how do we acquire digital characters? So that's one of the things we're really keen on is how we can capture representatives of ourselves and, and our characters and then augment that. It doesn't all have to be photorealistic metahumans. We can start with a realistic character and then move on for that. But how do we acquire those and teach the next workflow on how to you know, prepare scans, create digital avatars and move on in that pipeline? So we're building a photogrammetry rig, a large, um, kind of human scanning rig and face scanning rig so we can explore that digital character content creation. Next slide. Um, scanning and imaging. Again, we've got LiDAR scanners, handheld scanners, and this um, project was with um, a Turner Prize winning artist called Tai Shani. And it was before the center was open and one of the partners, it was Manchester International Festival, um, and they were waiting to um, kind of get some scanning done because of COVID, everything was locked down. So they approached us and we got our students to use a handheld scanner on, a, on an actress, which was difficult because we had to get her to sit still for quite a long time whilst we manually scanned the face. But we were able to sort of start getting students involved in this pipeline for high-end projects. I'm not sure if that video will play because I'm not sure it's hosted. Um, but, oh, um, local artists, um, my dog size, um, internationally renowned artist in for the street artist, he was um, making an installation in a derelict building in Portsmouth during lockdown. It was his way of getting around not being able to go to studio. He was given a locked, uh, an old derelict building and has produced an incredible exhibition in there. It's all gone now, it was up for a few weeks. So we helped him create um, an immersive soundtrack with our students on our courses to create um, an ambisonic kind of sound space in there that you could listen to with headphones. And it was playing live in, in the, in the actual space with speakers planted around in all the, the, the sculptures. And then we also scan the whole environment, LIDAR and photogrammetry. And we're currently giving that to our students to help them process and maybe create a virtual world. So it's enabling local artists as well to embrace technology. They, would, they wouldn't have had the confidence. They don't know how. And that's what we can take out of their hands. We can take that concern out of their hands, process all of that data for them. Um, next slide. This is some of the sculptures he made and they were large kind of paper mache sculptures that he placed around in this derelict building and each one like i said had um, a speaker to it so they all had their own voice and told their own story in this space and we came together and kind of scanned all of that next slide um this was one of our student works which again won't play because it was embedded in the slide but our students work with industry on lots of projects we've done simulations for the mod and military and healthcare on how to train and keep people safe in different environments we have a, a module that our students run where we pair them together with client projects and they work through a brief to create a prototype like a minimum viable product for companies so they can then go away they understand what was the process and they understand what it took then they can go away informed and we can help them seek funding to roll this out if i could have the next slide surprises in store um so this is what our center means we have embedded expertise we have facilities we will teach the skills and share those skills to create a new talented workforce to create the, the unicorns of the future um, we're doing an article with Icon in their, their standard soon, and we've called it Wizards and Unicorns, because I often get called a wizard because of my knowledge of technology, and the unicorns are now these skills that we cannot find, these rare mythical beasts that have skills in art, code, and kind of development. This is what our goal is, is to produce the wizards and the unicorns of the future, and it's a great fun title to be able to do. I mentioned about um, lowering the barrier. Again, this can work on a community level and bringing schools in to understand XR technology. It's allowing people into the door to have those conversations. We're intending on running workshops and conferences and everything like that. And I will be, you know, we reached out to Helsinki and met Santeri when we were looking for other XR studios um, across the globe. And now we're building a partner network with that. And it's a privilege to be here today and sort of be part of that. And this first kind of step into this global kind of connection we can make and democratize these kind of spaces for everyone to use. 
we love solving problems and challenges and we throw our knowledge and expertise at that so there's no problem that we will kind of turn away very often with technology we kind of say that it will solve all of your problems but we don't often ask the right questions about what those problems are it's really important that we create that space in the middle where we can come together with technology and creative solutions you know, we've been teaching um, you know, um our institute of cosmology and gravitation in the university and wanted to be able to visualize huge data sets but they wanted to do it in a creative way so we helped them build a user interface that's more fun less stayed and then we can still ap apply that to serious tools on how to explore these things and can i have the next surprise slide please <laughs> okay so we do lots of outreach we work with industry quite clo closely and one of the pictures there you can see is the imaginarium studios in, in london which is andy circus's motion capture studio i've had about 10 or 12 graduates go and work in that studio because we teach motion capture and one of the few people to go in. So we work closely with them. We do local events like Comic Cons and, and kind of we're always doing outreach into the community to make sure we're talking to people and bringing people into these really exciting spaces. Um, next slide, please. Um, so we work with lots of partners, as you can see, we work with the Royal Navy, NHS, IBM, Magic Leap, Royal Shakespeare Company, Imaginarium, Mary Rose, Marshmallow Lace, the list goes on about bringing us together with the industry. So we're not isolated in education, we are adapting. And it's quite difficult to do in education to be agile and to always be moving forward and be adaptive. We're very slow, you know, processes take time in large organizations. So we're building the center to be reactive and to be able to make these changes quite quickly, to be flexible to see what the need out there is, adapt to it, and then teach the relevant skills within across all of our different um, subject areas. Uh, next slide, please. One of the things we did was a, um, a simulator for the Royal Navy. They came in and uh, they were wanted a solution to stop their cadets crashing their million and inflatable boats. So we used our students to create a rib simulator so they could learn about driving one of these very expensive and fast boats without ever having to go out and use the physical thing itself. They could get their main skills learned in VR um, and then be able to apply that to the real thing after they've shown proficiency and sensibleness in it. We did a pilot project and then it was rolled out via a local company called Novatech and they've loaded up, they made it a real project and they've now rolled out these simulators across their training facilities. So again, it's about being able to do that early discovery, build a prototype, make sure it's working before companies then go out and spend lots of money um, because they're sold solutions by different companies they haven't tried it themselves and it's very difficult to commit yourself to a very large project without having tried and explored that prototype next year. Um, next slide please um, um i love the next one as well because i've just realized there's not much in here about dream keep going next slide there we go this is the one we're supposed to talk about and i'm running out of time <laughs> um dream was the collaboration you can see here all the different partners but to be part of a, a prestigious kind of group of people like this was really, really important for us to sort of stamp our, our kind of expertise and be part of something. So it was a very large organization, six million pounds to come together and build this new type of audience experience. Now, each of the large partners at the top that you can see, RSC, Punch Drunk, Philharmonia, Manchester International Festival and Marshmallow Laser Fist, they all produced their own XR experiences within their own companies. And then the dream project with the RSC came together and brought all of that learning together to a very large project. Um, we convened in January this year in deepest, darkest lockdown in the UK. Um, and we've just spent three months of intensive work in a studio. My job was to run the motion capture and, and capture seven actors in real time. It was all streamed into Unreal Engine and broadcast out to audiences across the world. Over 10 live performances, we managed to reach over 70,000 people and span 151 countries. And within that, we found that nearly 80% of the people that watched this had never watched Shakespeare before. So we, we hit new audiences. Children were enjoying it. We were originally going to stream it to a headset, but then we didn't. We decided to do it to um, just a, we made a custom browser. So there was a back-end solution with Amazon Web Services. People could even interact at home. They could use a WebGL interface to fire fireflies into the space. And then we had a heat map generated 
and real-time lights in the studio could direct and point at where the heat map was the hottest, and the actors could then see that light and collect the fireflies. So there was real-time interaction online as well. I realize I'm 20 minutes is up. So um, is there another slide maybe with one of the videos that I had? <laughs> so um, I can share the uh, findings with this. The whole finding from the project has gone out onto a website called findingsinthefuture.live. I mean, you can go online and that will incorporate all of the Q&A talks that we did behind the scenes, findings from all of the partner projects and the large project when it all came together at the end. Um, unfortunately, the actual performance itself is not online. Any we are negotiating um, fees and everything like that with actors and performers, and we're hoping that it'll be back up to watch soon. But there's lots and lots of back um, kind of behind the scenes stage information that you can you can see and watch. Um, and hopefully, maybe I can get some meaningful questions in a minute, because um, I think that should be the last slide.